physicists, so now we're getting into it. Um, basically, we'll start with the form of energy that you know best, that you have the most direct experience with, uh, or not as much experience living in orange as other people do, and that's heat. Now, heat can travel in three ways. Um, first, let's talk about what heat is. Heat, what we call heat, is basically a measure of how far particles, um, how fast and how far apart they're moving. So, the reason a thermometer rises, the, the liquid in the thermometer rises, is because the particles, they're moving too energetically and they push apart from each other and then they take up more room and it expands. That's what heat is. Heat is the energy which causes the particles to move around. Okay, so the first way we're going to talk about is radiation. So, essentially light radiates from the sun to us here on Earth. And it comes in, you know, travels in a straight line, but in a, you know, transverse wave, and it propagates without a medium. Generally, when energy moves from one place to another, it needs a medium, unless it's radiation. And that's one way heat can travel. So, this way heat can travel through empty space, through a vacuum, or space where there's not as much, um, not as many particles. So, it can radiate through a gas. Now, in this case, it's radiating infrared light. That's what heat is. It's radiated, it's infrared light. Um, particles do get in the way, and they can either deflect heat or store heat. Um, so, particles can either interrupt radiation or by deflecting it, scattering it, or interrupt radiation by storing the heat. This brings us to our next form of heat movement, conduction. So when those particles store the heat, what they start to do is they start to move, they get more energetic and they start to bounce apart. Um, when they, they bounce, they'll hit another one and they'll cause it to move. That's what we measure as heat, that energy that's measured as heat. So here, if we look, so that's how they transfer energy, they go from they bump into each other and transfer energy from one particle to the next along the line. So if we heat a rod at one end, we can measure how the heat moves along that rod. And that's what we're going to do in class. Um, you can measure how that heat moves along the rod. And the particles start to vibrate. And you see they're vibrating more than they're here. And they get less and less and less until they're not really vibrating anymore on the base level. Um, so conduction occurs in solids. It can only occur in solids. Uh, metals are excellent conductors and non-metals are very poor conductors and we call those insulators. Um, now, if you look at a thermos, well a dewer, D-E-W-E-R is the proper name, but thermos is the brand name you'll know. Um, if you look at a, a dewer, which is where we can put a hot soup in, a hot coffee, you can see the way they work. You put your liquid in here, it's all hot, you want it to stay hot, or cold, you want it to stay cold. And the blank space here, which is just air, or it's a vacuum, depending on how good the dew is, it might be a, a partial vacuum, a, you know, closer to a real vacuum, or, or just gas. Yeah. The heat is not enough to radiate, but it can't conduct through that empty space. Now, if there was gas in there, it could convect. So, brings us to convection. This is our last way that we're going to focus on how heat moves. Um, so this is how heat moves through a liquid and gas. This should not be new to you at all. Um, the particles heat up and their movement increases. So as they gain energy and momentum, they move upwards. This is why hot air rises. They move upwards and then the particles lose energy as they rise and they start to drop back down. Now, they can't go straight back down because this stuff's coming up and they would bump into. So you get that kind of a pattern. And that's your convection currents. We've all seen them. Uh, we've done them in class. Alright, that'll do. See you later.